All right, everyone, usually honesty and leftism don't go hand in hand. Like people say like, I'm not really a socialist, I'm a social democrat. And then in private, of course, they're saying that they just use that term to butter people up, which I've warned of many times. There's no such thing as social democracy. When they say that, just say, oh, so you're actually a capitalist. So say praise capitalism. They won't say it usually. Uh, they're just socialists minus the honesty, but it's good to see that at least one far left group is honest about its long term intent. And that's the Gravel Institute. Our old friends at the Gravel Institute, which bears the name of Mike Gravel. I have a feeling at this point he no longer has any particular thing to do with this group because I can't imagine that anti war, anti surveillance, anti-censorship Gravel from the mid-2000s when he was running and, and was crucifying, by the way, Obama and Hillary in the primaries at the time. I can't imagine that he would say something like this. I'm going to say this is probably not Mike Gravel making the post. Just going out on a limb and speculating that. Uh, basically talking about how the Constitution is terrible and, and we shouldn't govern the country by it and stuff. And when they got, you know, ratioed, almost by their own vapid left-wing fan base, uh, reiterating, oh, well, the Bill of Rights is pretty good. So, uh, so I guess, you know, speech. And Do you include the Second Amendment in that? I don't think you do. Uh, though the, the, the Bill of Rights is okay, but the rest of it's kind of outdated and, and useless. Okay, so women's suffrage and ending slavery are apparently not on the uh, left-wing priority list anymore. Now, this is actually, this is a legitimate, when, when, when leftists say things like this, take it at face value. It's not hyperbole. It's not a joke. This is what they really believe. To them, the Constitution that has shielded the country from the worst aspects of authoritarianism for uh, 250 fucking years, uh, when, when, when they look at it, they think of it as just a scrap of scriggly paper written by a bunch of old white dudes who are capitalistic and therefore wrong. That's how they look at the Constitution. They would scrap it. If, they, if these people had enough political power, enough political force, they would absolutely scrap the Constitution. You would end up with an FDR-style constitution. It would be, basically you'd have the guarantee to a commie block apartment and the right to at least one small meal a day to keep you alive and, and enslaved in a factory somewhere. You'd regress into a cabbage patch economy and it would be a terrible society. We know this because we've seen what far leftists have done in other countries before. It doesn't really matter what the former culture or political system was like. Something more like czarism, imperialistic, top-down, hierarchical, quasi-royal, um, something like China prior to Mao uh, arriving, um, something like Venezuela prior to the, the revolution so-called there, or any of these other places. It doesn't really matter. It doesn't matter what the composition of the population was, what the economic situation was like. It was usually crappy right beforehand, admittedly. Now, it certainly was in Russia, <laughs> to an extent in China. Um, it doesn't matter. It, it gets ruined. The only thing that bucks the trend is in China, once they abandoned hardline leftism and created a strong market element that they simply subjugated to their internal imperialism, well, that worked, although it's got problems now and certainly wrecked the environment and caused a lot of misery for people there. No, but it has created the world's largest middle class now. They just had to abandon elements of leftism to accomplish that in order to stay afloat. And of course, they needed nukes. And of course, they needed to bully and repeatedly invade their neighbors like Vietnam. It's interesting how nobody knows that the commies in China twice invaded communist Vietnam. I think back during the 70s, if I remember correctly. And everyone talks about the U.S. invading Vietnam, and we have a thousand movies about it, but practically nobody knows about the Chinese invasions that happened there. Or about the fact that they still harass their fishing vessels to this day repeatedly. The communists in Vietnam suck down Coca-Cola and have more diplomatic relations with evil capitalistic Uncle Sam at this point than their next door neighbors who on paper follow the same basic principles. Uh, why do you fucking think that is? But I'm very, very happy that finally we have leftists being honest, as opposed to the th former skeptics, the sellout crowd on YouTube, uh, or the breadliners and all these others. Um, who, who basically, in order to try to get other people to adopt their views, they lie to them. That's basically what they're doing. Let's just call it what it is. It's a fucking lie. Oh, no, I don't want... I, I support liberty. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, I don't want to kill dissidents or anything like that. <laughs> the Constitution sucks. Okay. Well, what other... What document do you intend to use? Probably something written by General Mao or some other cringe author throughout time. The sayings of Pol Pot. The little green book of, of what is it, uh, Turkmenistan or whatever. Uh, you probably end up using one of those. 
some hand guide to torture and depravity, uh, because torture and depravity, that's sort of the, the moniker of the left. And social democracy, which doesn't really truly exist at all, is basically socialism with a smiley face, unless they mean social democracy in the Nordic sense, in which case you've got a hyper-capitalistic market, market aspect propping up the welfare state. Well, fucking make up your mind. So do you support capitalism or are you actually a leftist? See, it, it's sort of like Biden's policy of ambiguity. As long as you don't take any hardline stance on anything and you're just wiggling around saying whatever people want to hear at the time, it's kind of hard for other people to refute you until they point out that that's what you're doing. And most people get distracted. They don't have enough, uh, enough uh, verbal finesse to actually focus on the fact that these people are basically shapeshifters. That's basically what leftism is. It's a cult of personality sort of a, a group of miscreants. Uh, but I find it uh, refreshing. Finally, we have a mainline left-wing group. They speak for a broad majority consensus within the further left. The Ravel Institute is one of the big ones in that lexicon, openly proclaiming, fuck the Constitution. And I don't think Mike Gravel would be very happy. I'm, again, I'm going to hazard a guess that he no longer has any sway over the group that bears his last name. I think he might have been kicked to the side by a bunch of young fanatics that uh, basically, were, basically were pushing their Twitter page by having his ad up in the first place, because it was basically a one-week-long joke campaign. I think I, I, think I uh, at the time, made a video, actually, in tacit support of it. Yeah, get, Mike Gravel would have been better than Biden. Again, he's almost 90 years old, but he's still more with it. More coherent, better worldview overall, and he is a leftist. That's the irony, and how bad Biden is. That's about all. Peace out.